The factory method pattern is a creation of design pattern which follows the dry principle, the don't repeat yourself principle. This pattern is actually a very simple to pick up and use pattern. You should use the factory pattern when you see the need to group and organize the creation of objects in a single location. This need can be recognized when you see methods with extra logic to create objects, which falls in the single responsibility principle. There are a few things that need to happen when you try to introduce a factory. First, in order to introduce a factory, we need to extract the common functionality of the classes that we'll be creating into a interface. And second, this is the actual factory method implementation. We pass in a request for a certain object and the factory responsible for creating and returning that object. So in a nutshell, the factory method is really a code construct, a, a way to organize your code. Let's take a look at this example that doesn't have a factory yet and let's try to improve it by adding the factory method pattern to it. This program is not actually doing anything important. Just imagine that this loop does something important and when it's done doing the work, we need to log some data, which we do on line 15. Now, we have a call to a function on line 15 in which we pass some data to be logged. When we inspect the log function, we see that it's actually doing more than just logging. We're inspecting some global variable and we are creating some logger object depending on that global variable. Let's think about this. This log function needs to know about this log type global variable. It needs to know about these different logger classes and it needs to know how to use each of these logger classes. Notice how each of these logger classes have a different way to log the data. This first one has a print to console and then we have this save logger and we have this log to database. This method is doing way too much. Time to introduce the factory method. Step number one here is to inspect these logger classes and find out what is the common functionality between them. These are extremely simple and made this way for the purpose of this demo. Real world scenarios are indeed going to offer uh, much more challenges and you have to address those. Also, these classes are all in the same file, which is not representative of best practices and only built this way to make the demo more practical. Okay, okay, uh, let's get back on topic here. So it looks like all of these classes have some kind of a function that logs the data with different implementations. And this is exactly what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and create an interface based on this information. I'm going to call this interface the iLogger interface, and it's going to have just one function, the log function that takes one string as an argument. Uh, next, let's go ahead and implement the iLogger in each one of the logger classes. Again, keep in mind that these classes should be in separate files. Notice that for each of the logger classes, I am moving the implementation into the log function and deleting that class specific logger method. When we do this, because these are now iLogger methods, we'll be able to call the log function regardless of which logger class we're working with. You can see here, I'm updating the methods to log in all cases. All right, let's go ahead and add our factory class. I'm going to call it the logger factory. And in the logger factory, I'm going to have one static method, the create logger method, that returns a iLogger and takes one parameter, the logger type enum that we'll create here shortly. This enum is a very straightforward way for those using the factory to specify what kind of iLogger they want. As you will see later, it makes it really easy to extend the class and add other loggers. Okay, right now we have three types of loggers, the console, the file, and the database. Um, later on, we'll add the API logger. Now, inside the create logger method, we're going to use a switch. So depending on which logger type is requested, we're going to return the iLogger of the correct type.
Okay, so now that we have our factory ready, let's go ahead and update the main program to make use of this factory. On line 15, I'm going to go ahead and create a logger variable here, and we'll hold a iLogger that we created in the factory, depending on what kind of logger type enum uh, we pass in. In this case, I'm going to start with a console logger, and I'm going to modify the log function of our program to take in a iLogger. That way we no longer need to check the global variable and create a logger inside the function. The logger is now created in the factory and pass in to the log function. Wow, look how much cleaner our log function looks now. Let's go ahead and run the program to see the results. As you can see here, every three seconds or so, we're logging a new message to the console. Let's go ahead and change the logger type to the file type and run the demo again. We're not going to see anything on the console this time because the file logger only logs to a file. We need to find the file and open it to see the results. Now, what if we wanted to add a logger that logs to an API, for example? Let me actually challenge you for a moment. Don't think about the API implementation. We're not going to do that. But can you guys think about the three steps that we need to add to the factory? Go ahead and pause the video if you want to challenge yourself just for a moment. All right, here we go. Step one is to create a new API logger class that implements the iLogger interface. In this demo, I'm not actually going to send the logs to an API. I'm just going to print to the console, but you get the idea. Step two is to add a new logger type value to the enum. In this case, we're going to add the API value. And step three is to enhance the switch statement and return the API logger when requested. All right, let's go ahead and run a quick demo. As you can see here, all we need to do is to change the logger type from file to API, and everything else stays the same. This is a really clean implementation of the factory pattern. So just keep in mind that the factory pattern is just a way to organize your code. You have it, everything centralized into a static method, and it's really clean to add a new logger in this case. So this was the factory pattern. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, leave a like, some comment, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.